Over the last couple of weeks, we have been trying to discover what is the best scissor that you could carry in your pocket every single day. There has been a lot of carnage along the way, but I think with this video, we can bring this process to a close and finally answer that question. So just a quick reference, we have 10 items that we are testing against with a maximum of two points per item for a grand total of 20 points plus a precision test. If it is a plus, it means that it is able to complete the precision task of cutting thread up close and personal. That's how we're going to determine whether these are good scissors or bad. Let's get this out of the way. These are the single worst scissors that we tested in this entire process with a grand total of two points, two points out of 20. Do not buy these under any circumstances. So the Leatherman Style PS is actually one of my favorite small multi-tools. And it's nice to see that it got a grand total of 10 points with the ability to cut the precision task as well which actually puts it above the Leatherman Wave in performance. Really, really nice to see. Very, very easy to carry as well. Now the Leatherman Style CS is currently discontinued. However, this is doing a stand-in for the Leatherman Micro, which I cannot find right now. It was able to score a 10, which is a little bit disappointing considering how big the scissor is. It just has too much play and too much flex, I think. And because of that, it just doesn't quite cut a lot of the materials. Now the MP600 by Gerber and the MP400 use the same scissor and the performance here was quite good actually at 15 out of 20. In fact, performing better than most if not all of the Leatherman scissors. That's not something I expected, but might mean that I need to test these scissors further. The leverage was good, had very little flex, really, really excellent. Now the SOG Snippet is a really strange tool. They did some things really right and then some things not so much. It's not the most comfortable tool to use, I will admit. However, you cannot deny the cutting performance. The scissors specifically are some of the best small scissors that I've ever used. Not only can you adjust them and tighten them, you can take them apart to sharpen them as well. And if you take a look, you will see that there's almost no flex when you cut with them. So I'm going to demonstrate that here so you can actually see, so I'm not just making this up. This actually outperformed most of the other small dedicated scissor multi-tools like the Leatherman Style CS. So really, really impressive performance. Not, like I said, not the most comfortable to use, but it has a pocket clip. And yeah, the scissor really, really cuts well. I cannot deny that. A score of 16 is really, really impressive. And just so you know, even though I'm not showing the entire gauntlet testing, all of the individual data points will be included in the spreadsheet that is linked down in the description, just so you guys know. Now this definitely takes the prize for the coolest scissor that we have testing today with probably the most interesting setup with this deployable finger rings, but performance wise, not so much. They really don't offer anything of value. I would not recommend them unless you're only cutting, well, paper. Now from time to time, I get asked questions about next tool. Do I recommend them and so on? And I actually have three of them and we're going to talk about all three. I think in many ways they're more innovative than most of the multi-tools that have come out here. And you're, as you're going to see, performance is impeccable. Where they fall flat is not in design, but rather in quality of materials. At least that's my experience. Once again, this isn't showing the entire gauntlet, just some of the more difficult materials. It really does cut them quite cleanly. Coming in at 17 points out of 20, yeah, this is one of the better ones out there. 
Um, you even can cut the paracord at the very tip, which is quite impressive. And we have another next tool. Now, this actually didn't perform as well as the mini flagship. However, it has some features that are not present on that tool as well. So obviously we have a bigger plier, a saw, a bigger scissor, and it came in performing around a 15. So not quite as good as the mini flagship, but still much better than most of the multi-tools out there. So something you can take apart, sharpen, put back together, once again, the only downside I ever have with Nextool is that they don't use the highest quality metals. If they did, man, these things would be amazing. Now, I probably would have only shown one of these if the results were equal, but this one actually performed a little bit worse than the other two. Coming in with a score of 14, it still has a lot of benefits and it's still performing above most of the other multi-tools. However, However, not quite as good as the mini flagship or the Black Knight. After the first video we made with the Klein's performance, I was chomping at the bit to test this exact scissor. Now, what I like so much is that, first of all, it's only three and a half inches and quite light. What it didn't say on the post is that it also comes with this awesome little sheath to cover it as well. So not your normal style scissors, it's actually designed for copper wire and other things. But as you're going to see, the performance is really, really good against the gauntlet. Heritage slash Klein did not disappoint with this scissor whatsoever. With a score of 17 plus, this might be the most efficient carry that we have found so far because it is so small. Now, you're not gonna get a lot of cutting area like you will with the larger electrician shears. However, this can fit in places that that simply won't. So I definitely think it's in the running. Okay, I gotta be brutally honest here. I didn't have much expectations from this. I mean, after all, it's basically a locking forcept, right? With a scissor section. But the results were so surprising, I decided to showcase the entire gauntlet run. Just watch as this thing literally destroys the gauntlet. I'm fairly confident that it had I not shown the full run of this, <laughs> I don't think anyone would have believed me that it scored an actual 18 out of 20. Absolutely mind blowing. Now the next one up is the Byberry Wave Clone. What's quite interesting here, and 
it actually follows what my observations were. This particular multi-tool, the scissors that they are using, maybe were heat treated a little differently than the multi-force that you can buy at Walmart. And the performance really reflects that. It's much more flexible and with a score of only eight, yeah, it shows. Now that brings us to the multi-force. Now, interestingly, this is actually quite a bit different than the Biberry. Notice that the outer implements are actually on the same side as the small tools. That's not something that's true about the Wave. And in many ways, is better than the Wave. And the other thing that I have noticed, and now I can actually confirm with real testing, is that the scissors on the multi-force do, in fact, perform a little bit better. These actually scored an 11 which is quite good and definitely has less flex than the Biberry multi-tool. So really, really interesting to actually see that and have some quantitative numbers to back it up. Now, I'm not trying to go out of my way to rag on Leatherman here, but when a $10 multi-tool, and this was $10, okay, is performing almost on par or equal to most of your scissors or even above, you have a problem. This scored a 13, which is better than the Wave. It's better than how the Free Series scissor performed. In fact, it's better than the Black Oxide Surge performed. So yeah, kind of crazy. And here are the results of the scissor testing for today. Now, keep in mind, this is a small portion of the scissors that we have already tested. You can see the full results and organize them as you see fit in the spreadsheet that is linked down in the description below. Not what I expected. Once again, we are being surprised. I would never have thought that the Dr. Slick, which wasn't in the original picture for this video, and I put in at the last moment, I didn't think this would pull an 18 almost a 19 in reality that's kind of nuts and there's different varieties different lengths of this tool so i'm definitely going to have to try these again in the near future in a different setup this concludes for the most part my exploration of scissors outside of reviewing them independently as they come in so we won't be doing videos like this anymore i will be adding results that i get from future multi-tools to that spreadsheet. That way we can continue to have a running list. And we're gonna have one more video that's gonna be relatively short where we're gonna go over that data and talk about what are the best dedicated scissors that we have found that are easy to carry and also what are the best multi-tool scissors. We can say best now because we actually have enough data to back up our assertions. So. With that video will be coming probably Wednesday to Friday of next week. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope this was of value to you. Maybe it wasn't, but let me know. Are there scissors I still need to cover? We'll talk again soon. But for now, that's it for EDC Scissors. Have a good one, guys.